Hey everybody, welcome back to Hit or Miss Hallmark Movie Reviews. We have finally sprung into love. Have we? Have we sprung? I'm sprung. Have we sprung a leak? Oh, I guess. <laughs> I feel like I was so confused the past couple of weeks. I wasn't sure if Hallmark was airing older movies that I just didn't recognize or remember at all, which was actually the case. So yeah. I thought that they were new. <laughs> it was just all over the place. I was so confused. It was. But today we are reviewing Shifting Gears, starring Tyler Hines and Catherine Burrell. And Kristen Booth. And Kristen Booth. The writer here is Matt Marks. Uh, previous credits include Christmas Made to Order, Portrait of Love, and Christmas Wonderland. And the director, well actually something very cool about this movie re involving the director, uh, Young K. Crystal Lowe from Sign Seal Delivered makes her directorial debut as the first participant in Hallmark's Make Her Mark Woman's Directing Program. Founded by no other than Ashley Williams. Pretty awesome. It's awesome. Uh, Crystal's success marks the conclusion of kind of like the pilot phase for this program, but the program will continue and it will be opening up to other up and coming women directors outside of the Hallmark Circle. That's very exciting. I think it's important to acknowledge this before we talk about the movie um, because it's great and it's a positive thing for the future of Hallmark and. The moment this initiative opens up, I will be first in line. I know. I, I am just, I know maybe I'm supposed to keep that private or whatever, but like I, I'm just gonna share it to the world. I'm so excited for this. It seems like the stars are aligning here, kind of. Indeed they you know? are. I mean, that, yeah, it's definitely great news. Uh, I, I wonder if the program will ever like broaden to include like screenwriting, producing, no, and other probably. jobs. Why not? It seems it's like great. a good avenue. I hope they move forward along and keep opening it up. Yeah. Me too. So, what's this one about? After female mechanic Jess reluctantly agrees to participate in a car restoration show, she is shocked to learn that her ex-boyfriend Luke is the main competitor. Will sparks reignite? Another, Another win for IMDb? Yeah, real. Great synopsis. Always. Um, now, now, before we get into what we think, okay. I think it's worth mentioning that this was filmed in good old Ontario, where we are right now. Just up the street. Well, just five, five hours up the street. Five hours up the street. <laughs> <laughs> um, and both Kat and Tyler are from Toronto as well. Uh, so there was an opportunity for them to have some family and friends come out to the set. I know that Tyler's mom was out for at least one of the shoot days, and Tyler's nieces were actually in one of the scenes. Yeah, very fun. And we know most of these movies are filmed in Canada, but the ratio greatly favors British Columbia. So an Ontario movie, or anywhere in the east side of Canada, is generally a treat. An occasion, even. Nice. But that leads me to an unfortunate realization that really hurts me to say. Oh no. I'm not a big fan of Hallmark movies made in Ontario, or Eastern Canada, this side of Canada. That sounds like a huge generalization, but unfortunately, it pretty much rings true, for me at least. And it always, it always comes down to production quality. It only takes like a minute or two before I can tell and I'm already looking up where the movie was made because I know it wasn't made out west. And usually it's even quicker than that because we know the production companies. I said this on the Hallmarkies podcast. Which we were on just this past week. Yeah, I don't know how to put it other than they look more Canadian. They look they, more Canadian. They look like Canadian television. But we should be happy about that. Yeah, but I mean, it's just, a, you know, the ones shot at West have this filmic quality to them. Aside from the story or acting, they can still be trash movies. But they look right. And I just don't get that from the movies shot out here. And it kills me to say that, but when it comes to Hallmark, Eastern Canada is always going to be second unit to the West. Fair enough. I mean, I do kind of agree, and I, I see your point. And my point actually it actually goes towards the Crystal Lowe thing, but I'll talk, I'll talk about that. Okay. But what was the last movie that you loved? Oh, yeah, right. I, the last movie I know that I loved that was filmed in Ontario was Noelle Next to Work. Okay, so it's not all bad. No, of course, <laughs> but I mean, I can't think of another one. Either can That's I, the only one I, I know. Just, I'm I just loved. drawing a blank on what's <laughs> yeah. been filmed in so Ontario. If any, if, yeah, if anybody knows, I'd, I'd love to be proven wrong. But um, There's a bunch, though. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch. But anyway. Yeah, no, there is. All right, I get what you're saying. All right, so what do we actually think? So, shifting gears. Okay, what, what we have here is star crossed auto mechanic high school sweethearts. Greasy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just makes me go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Okay, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. That's awful to say, but like just based on the plot, I'm not really interested. Okay, first off, I have mentioned in our reviews more than once, if I see one more mechanic in a Hallmark movie, I would turn it off. Yeah, I mean, that was that was in the Christmas rush when there was like multiple Too many. mechanics. Like, but we know. do have a woman mechanic here, so I guess that's different enough. Yeah. Um, so, okay, I'll, I'll let it slide. <laughs> but, okay, overall, you know, I think we have a very familiar narrative and a motif with maybe a slight twist, like we just mentioned, but I just think it's been replayed countless number of times and I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired of the same old, which, and, and I would say that this story, subpar story, that is elevated slightly by performances. Fair. It's, yes, I, it's, it's a tried and true formula, but I am tired of this formula. <laughs> Uh, all the tropes are there. Sh shall we go through the tropes here? Sure. Okay. We have a family business in Jeopardy, estranged high school exes. We have a contest slash reality TV show, uh, the grief left behind after a mother's passing, a big misunderstanding. Uh, we have a fair. And, you know, we have uh, a relationship that quickly resolves itself, and we have a happily ever after ending. Yeah. Oh, and an extra happy ending. And an extra, oh yes, two um, double whammies, two yeah, double extra happies. It definitely felt like sort of an old school one that was just thrown in there. I mean, I was getting real Christmas contest vibes from this one, which is not it's, a good thing. It's not a good thing. <laughs> you know, for, for something that is part of this brand new initiative, I was just hoping for something new and exciting. And, you know, it, I don't think we got that, unfortunately. I would have to say, I think Tyler is the saving grace in this movie. You know, because because this is what I think. It can be a very bad movie, but nine times out of 10, you're going to watch it because he's in it. He's always the same. Yes, granted, he's always the same. But I think that's what we like about him, uh, you know, even down to the toothpick. When we Now we're, when we see the toothpick, it's like, oh, okay, yes, it's, it's Tyler. But if I want to take a more critical look at it, I am tired of that too. I yeah, I was gonna say, as Rachel said on the Hallmarkies podcast to yeah. us, uh, I think the cool guy Tyler shtick is starting to get a little stale. It's not always necessary. Like when he rode up on the motorcycle wearing the business suit in the intro, I was like, oh God, why? <laughs> what is the purpose of that? Look, he looks great. I know, but it was stupid. It, it didn't. It didn't. Requ it wasn't required. He looks good, but it's it's over the top. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see a more vulnerable Tyler, less cool guy Tyler. He's inherently cool anyway. You cannot. Yeah, you can't you uncool can't him. Scrub that off of him. No. <laughs> so you don't really need to exaggerate it like they did in that scene. Place and time, right? I, I I don't know. I don't think it was absolutely needed here. I think I actually think he's a great actor. I think he deserved a better role in a better movie and. I that, I don't mean that to sound as harsh as it sounds. I understand why they used him. Like logistically, you have a built-in audience who love him, so that automatically sets this up as a winner for Hallmark, right? Yeah, but that's the thing. And here's rant number two. Okay. Um, I feel like this was meant to be a gimme for Crystal Lowe for that reason alone. It's like, oh, here you go. Don't worry about it. She's got Tyler. I think Hallmark and Make Her Mark probably thought they were doing her solid, but I kind of feel like they did her dirty instead. Sure. They gave her the A-list actors, but they gave her a B-list location, B-list production team, and B-list story, story for sure. Yeah. Should have been the other way around to really give her new directing chops a go. So I don't think she was totally at fault here. But well, she's brand um, new to this, right? Well, to, I know she's done a few short films, and but you know, to do a full feature production on Hallmark with so many constraints that you're working with, I'm sure, in terms of logistics, in terms of like even people saying, you know, higher up people saying what they expect. Yeah. Like there's so many um, hurdles to overcome. So oh, sure, it's a daunting task, and I'm not saying it's easy at all. But, oh, definitely not. I mean, but, and also that being said, I didn't hate this movie by any means. No, you didn't. But you liked it more than uh, I other did. Than some, uh, other than some good performances and a few cute moments, this one didn't shift my gears. No, oh. that, that doesn't sound. This one didn't rev my engines. Ah. Uh, no, it's still too. It's sexy. still too. Yeah, I don't like that. I didn't like it. <laughs> we don't like to bash any films. We're filmmakers. We know how hard it is just to create like a 10 minute short. Oh, so, for sure. But yes, we do poke fun at some silly plot holes or continuity errors, stuff like that. All in good fun though. So I'm hoping it's not coming off as too, too harsh. Yeah, you still got a review, right? We still want to give a, <laughs> uh, a critical review, analysis, whatever we do here, you know, mm -hmm. to, to the movie. But while watching this, I think we were actually enjoying the fun and sometimes poignant dialogue. So the actual dialogue in this movie I thought was actually good. Well, cars don't cause pain. They also don't love. 
One that I really liked is uh, when Jess was like, you look like you sell bonds. <laughs> that was like the motorcycle yeah. thing. That I was, was like, yeah, why do you look good. like that? Uh, another great line, um, I I'm paraphrasing this and I'm probably getting it wrong. We actually discussed it on the Hallmarkies podcast, but oh, he was like, I, I don't really take sides, but then she was like, you know, maybe that's the problem. Yeah. Like you're just kind of aloof or whatever, you know? There are definitely some good lines here and there. Yeah. Uh, this one was particularly good. I may have lost the most important person to me, but I'm gonna do everything that I can to make sure she doesn't lose the most important thing to her. <laughs> I thought that was nice. Yeah, that was good. So, you know, overall, this wasn't bad. We've definitely seen worse mm -hmm. on Hallmark. It's not, it's not the worst of the Ontario movies. <laughs> there you go. But what I think is heartbreaking for me here is, you know, I really wanted to love this one, being the first movie from the Make Her Mark initiative. I had high hopes. Um, I think it could have been more inclusive in regards to having more diverse cast. Mm -hmm. The whole initiative is about being diverse, right? So, but it, it is the first one out the gates, I yeah. guess, you know, what it's I mean. so, so maybe it'll get better. Maybe, you know, they're just- Well, they, gotta, they just gotta get a lot more. It's like, you yeah. know, if you take 50 Hallmark movies, 20 of them are gonna be pretty bad, <laughs> even with the good director, like no, the seasoned directors and everything, it doesn't matter. Get those nuggets, those little gems that kind of punctuate through. Um, and I'm hoping that one of those movies ends up being part of this initiative. Yeah. Maybe it's the one I direct. Hey. In terms of the direction, I thought it was fine, uh, especially for a first timer, as we said. Although, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of the overuse of the split screen technique. Yeah. They used it a bunch in this movie. I, I do agree it's an easy and convenient way to show like multiple things going on in a scene. But, you know, kind of how I say like lazy writing, I think it might be a lazy editing or lazy directing. Yeah, they, well, it's not lazy, it's just new. I mean, well, I, I noticed I noticed some shots in the beginning that were like, that looked a little shaky, a little weird. It's just overdone, even montage. No, like, yeah, I, not... I hope Hallmark would trust their audience's intelligence. We can grasp the storyline without needing everything spelled out for us. Yeah, well, That's what it's just stylism. Well, why don't we head to performances? Yeah, let's do that. My standout for this movie is Kat Burrell, because I really liked her. I think this is actually my favorite performance of hers, just because she she seemed extra. I liked her facial acting. She was doing some fun stuff with I her eyes. I thought she was doing too she much was... facial acting. Yeah, me. but I mean, you don't, she, she generally kind of comes off not as exuberant, so it was nice to see. Okay. Especially opposite Tyler, because he's never ever gonna make a face. <laughs> like ever. Well, I think it's obvious my standout is Tyler. I think he, kind of like Bethany Joy Lenz, kind of like elevates any story that he's given. I do want to see him flex his chops more though. I, I am, as I said, tired of the cool guy, Tyler. I have seen him be really romantic, really like vulnerable, really just like, uh, just like melts your heart kind of Tyler. And I Not miss Not really in that. a few years, yeah. I really miss that. I, I, like, I like seeing him on screen, mm. my standout here. I get excited when he's on screen. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, why don't we head on to nitpicky, hit picky. Okay, a hit. There were some great music choices in this one, like I said off the bat. Um, there was some nice Motown. And where there's Motown, there's a Jess. Songs whenever she was working on her cars. And I thought that was cool. I liked that. All right, Knit, the music. <laughs> they, oh, replayed, they replayed two of those tracks like 10 times in the movie. I was getting real annoyed, actually. Uh, and there always seemed to be a situational ambient music in every scene. Yes, that was maybe, bad. Maybe they had, maybe they were covering bad audio or something, but it was like every scene had a radio or like, uh, or, or a, a party. A party. Uh, there, there was one really funny one where Tyler was giving a heartfelt moment outside by the campfire or whatever, wherever it was. We and, couldn't hear it. And then it was like a disco party. I, <laughs> I was just thinking about the time we went camping at Lake Port. Mm. And we have just seen so many stars. It was, it was really good to get away after my mom's passing. It was, yes, that's true. We were being distracted by the party indoors when they were having the discussion outdoors by the fire. Okay, yes, so basically the hit is like the Motown music while she's working on the cars, but the use of certain like score music in other scenes was not, was not very good. There you go. Yeah. A uh, hit. I thought there was some nice, fun editing during the reality show. I like when the camera was like spinning around them and like the, their names kind of popped up on the underneath the, each contestant. I yeah, thought that was, that was nice. fun. The reality show stuff actually looked pretty it good. It was fun. That was the most convincing out of all the production, actually. Yes. 
Uh, knit. Okay, I thought like the remedy, I guess, for the height differences. Um, it wasn't that ingenious. I, I mean, don't first know. of all, there's not really a height difference. They're, they're, they're basically it's exactly the same height. They, you know, and they didn't try to make tall, Tyler look taller. I think she she might no. be like she might be like an inch or half an inch taller than him. I don't really know. She's she definitely looks like a tall girl. Mm -hmm. She's um, taller than her husband too. Her husband's even do... shorter than Tyler. Oh and, really? And her husband it was well, the reality show. Yes, guy. he was the reality TV host. That's funny. But I thought like that what they did to kind of remedy that issue, although I don't even really think it's an well, issue, the skate... was like they would have them far apart in certain scenes, and I'm like, it, it looks obvious. To well, me. yeah. The, the right in the intro there was one that was very obviously. Forced perspective shot yeah. where he's like on the other side of the street and it was like, uh, like a you, know, you don't need to do that. Just let him be shorter. Let him, yeah. you know. And, and I, then they did it with the roller skates. The roller skating scene. Yeah. Um, she um, probably wasn't on roller skates. No, yeah. Dan, Dan actually sent me a picture. She was just walking in socks and he was on the skates. Um, but Mind you, also, I really, I really that's like something that they scene. do. Uh, that that has nothing to yeah. do with height difference. That's no. something they do often, so you don't have two people skating and trying to like, you know. That's true. One yeah, yeah, yeah. one person's almost always on you know, on their side. That's true. And I really liked the roller skating scene. Yeah, that was one of the better ones. Too. Yeah. Knit. Okay. I've mentioned this too. Would there really be that much paint on her car when he accidentally turned that paint sprayer thing on? Uh, it was like lodged or stuck and then like it went off. There was so much paint. Yes, there would be. I, I, I was going to say this on the, on the podcast, but I, I didn't get to say the whole well, thing. But like, so it's, it's pressurized paint, right? So that they showed the hose. It was sitting on the desk. As soon as you turn that thing on, it goes... With paint, so of course they didn't show that. No, they didn't because that's not easy to film. Sure. Uh, they, they probably can't even. They probably even tried and did like uh, a VFX shot and it looked terrible and they didn't use it. So that's all you got was the. Pss. But yes, absolutely. If you Horrible turn if you turn that though. thing on, it would it would have just sprayed everywhere. All right, all right, all right. Fine. <laughs> there would have been a lot more paint actually. Um, knit. This is a small knit. I mentioned this while we were watching it, but I thought Tyler's dad was his brother. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he seem really young? I thought he was. I, I, well, he's young, but it also just didn't seem like he was related. Uh, I think the actor is actually old enough to be well, Tyler's sure, father. Um, didn't look that much older than Tyler. Yeah, it's a little maybe. harder to tell when it's like, oh, yeah. you know, one of them's 40, one of them's 55, like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. So, Anyways, why don't we head on to the Hallmark Report card? Let's do it. A promotion or a deadline? Yes. Of course there is. We have a reality show that's, contest. That's a deadline. And, and, yeah. and then the, the place being sold. The place being sold, yeah. Career-driven lead. I would say yes. Of course. Yes. Big misunderstanding. Yes. Yes. We didn't know that uh, his dad was going to try to buy the place. And she didn't know. And, and then she didn't know. She found out that Everybody Tyler knew and then wasn't ta telling her. Right, 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 right. And, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, change of heart. De definitely. Always. Always. Someone gets dumped, fired, dies, or quits. Yes. Well, Tyler quits his dad. Yeah. <laughs> I quit you, dad. Tyler <laughs> quits his dad. Uh, second Roman subplot. I, I would say no, right. yeah. A proposal or a wedding? No. Uh, Travel issues? No. Selling a house, business, or farm? Yes. Of course. Big city, small town, transition? No. no. Was this in Detroit? I don't even think I think we... so. I, you know, Motor City. I think it was just supposed to feel like it was sure. Detroit. I wasn't too sure. wasn't clear. <laughs> that's why they're in a garage. Unless I that's missed That's why they're it. in a garage the whole time. It's too dangerous to go outside. Maybe. I, maybe I missed <laughs> it. They may have said that. I don't know. I don't think they did. I don't, yeah. uh, maybe, yeah. Um, the almost kiss. Okay, I thought there was going to be an almost kiss in this, and I could be wrong, but I don't think there is. No. There was two kisses, though. There was two kisses. No. And they were yeah. great, and they were passionate. Oh, yeah. I wanted to put that in the hit. That was one of the better kisses we've ever seen. Love and I, it. I give it completely to Kat Burrell because she... She went in. She dove. She, she jumped his bones. She did He's a good, good job. Though, she did, come she, on. He she did a good job. She, she did the kiss that every girl would want to no, do. No, but when, when they were kissing by the fire, he did, like, the hand thing. Oh, yeah. Well, Love. Okay. Mad Dash. No. No, they she was kind of like, oh, yeah, never even left a building. Dad. How could you do Mad Dash? Yeah, okay. Um, you got this. Well, not no. in so many words, but he at the contest, he does say, there's the girl I know, or what? You yeah, know he what said mean? something like, like it, but no, it's got to be, it's gotta be that It's on. not the exact, so no. We're not you got like this it. or I got this. Yeah, yeah. So, did this hit or miss the hallmark for you? I hate to say this, but this was a miss. And it was also a miss for me. Yeah. You know. Not it'll a, get better. Not a huge one. It'll get better. No, no, a small miss, but it, it'll get better. I think so too. Yeah. 
Anyways, let us know what you thought in the comments below. Was it a hit or miss for you? Yes, and uh, we will be back with the second movie, but uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the little bell for notifications. And we'll see you next episode.